What's up, friends, and welcome into Fantasy Pros MLB. I am the Welsh. There is no Joe Piazapia here today, but I have got a great replacement. He is my dear friend, Ryan Bloomfield. The Bloomer is in the house as we're going to be discussing the 13 most undervalued players that you guys have got to target. Most might be a little contrite, actually. It's just 13 undervalued players that we've targeted, and we're going to talk to you about why are they undervalued, why do you need them, Hopefully, we will give you some answers, and you can find all those answers as well over at Fantasy Pros. If you guys are looking to get into your drafts, the draft kit is out. Go and check that out today. The Draft Wizard, you can start experimenting and having so much fun with all of your different draft settings, and there's some amazing tools you guys can get in and sync your leagues. You can ex you can literally mock draft how your league does it, and you can do a lot of that for free. If you want to get a little bit more, you can get into the premium product. And you can start getting all the insights, the draft assistance, and more. So go and check it out today over at Fantasy Pros, fantasypros.com slash premium draft kit. Do all the stuff. Get locked in today. Ryan Bloomfield, what is up, brother? It's really good to see your face. It's great to see you, man. I, I, I'm very, very jealous of, of you being able to kind of gallivant around the Phoenix area <laughs> and check out spring training as I used to live down there. But uh, but yeah, always love this time of year. So doing well, man. Um, shout out to your Hillsborough Hops hat, by the way. That's just up the road from me, and uh, that's oh, awesome. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Actually, I get like I've got a couple collection of hats that get the most attention, and the two are the Hillsborough Hops and the Savannah Bananas. So I'm just trying to collectively. I've got one that I haven't unveiled on camera yet. It's the Lake Elsinore Lookouts. But it's the one with the eyes. And I think it's going to weird everybody out if I have two eyes looking at everybody. But I'll try it on an episode. You, you, you won't know until you try. Yeah. You switch it out mid-episode mid, mid episode and see who notices. That's right. Well, this is going to be great. This is awesome having you here. Bloomfield is one of the best. You can find him over at Baseball HQ. And on one of the hottest podcasts in the land, of course, Joe and myself. But Bubba and the Bloom, KC Bubba, dear Casey Bubba, who does some writing over here at Fantasy Pros and Bloomfield. You guys have been rocking the podcast. And I imagine you guys have probably hit on, like conceptually, this interests me, sleepers and undervalued and breakouts. They're all kind of terms that have like slight variations from each other. And I imagine you guys have had these conversations. When you think about like undervalued, how does that differ from sleepers or breakouts, even if it's just like a minute little you know, instance. Yeah, it's tough to it's it's tough to tell. Like what what I what I think of undervalued is I I'm looking at average draft position at ADP and just comparing guys at certain positions going you know right around them and and you take a you take a cluster of three or four players at the same position say who which one do you like kind of out of that group going roughly at the same time in the draft and that would be my 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 quote unquote undervalued uh, player for there. So I mean, and that makes sense. So we've got thirteen. We've got to buzz through them. If you guys like it, go down and check into the comments and tell us who's your favorite undervalued guy. When you do so, you got opportunities to win some awesome stuff. We were talking about the Jazz Chisholm jersey last week. I got to be honest with you, I don't remember if when you're listening to this, you're still eligible, but there's always <laughs> great prizes that are out there. So make sure you're commenting on the videos below because you never know what you're going to win. So let's get into this. Let's talk about undervalued player number one. He actually came up in our ATC Ariel Cohen projections episode. How about Xander Bogarts? Xander Bogarts coming in with an overall ADP, which is great about Fantasy Pros. You can go and check out the ADP across all the sites. It creates a collective ADP, pulling all the data in, and the ECR. He has got a rank of 95, and he's actually got an ADP of 96. So it's almost outside the top 100. This was almost a 2020 guy last year. Projections like him just about the same 2020 with high batting average usually isn't a lower into top 100 range it's usually in the like 75 plus so talk to us about why Xander Bogarts if and is undervalued in your mind I think he is just because like what one of my one of my crusades so far through through draft season has just been prioritizing batting average as, as much as I can in the kind of the early and early mid rounds and Xander Bogart's like totally, totally delivers that last five years, batting average 309, 300, 295, 307, 285 across a boatload of plate appearances. 
Um, the power is not, you know, great, but like you said, could could go 20 home runs at 19 last year. I think the the question is and whether whether Bogarts returns his uh, returns a profit here is that stolen base total. Um, eight stolen bases in 2022, 19 last year in 2023 for San Diego. Was that taking advantage of the new rules, a different organization philosophy? Not sure, but uh, I think despite that kind of variance and we don't know what the stolen base total will be, the the batting average, the runs, um, he can play every single day that he can. He, he's, he's played hurt last year. He's played hurt almost throughout his entire career, kind of a nagging wrist thing, but he's he continues to deliver throughout. So really like Xander Bogarts. I kind of comp him to Dansby Swanson going a little bit later uh, at the same position. Both rock-solid shortstop options for you if you need a, some stability up the middle. But the difference, Dansby, pretty you know significant drop in batting average. Different types of players, yep. Why do you think you're honing in and targeting batting average so much? Because I don't want to go too far on this, but what I think is so interesting is there was a couple of years ago, if people are new to the fantasy baseball space and don't follow like the trends or listen to a lot of the podcasts, there was this, and I was kind of with this. I liked it. And our uh, friend who was just on not too long ago, Justin Mason kind of started this like, Hey, I'm going to punt batting average. And this was like three or four years ago. Like I'm going to like actively go and punt batting average. And a lot of people felt, Hey, this is, is the this is the spot that I think I could punt in a roto league. I could actually start to punt batting average. Well, then in first pitch this year, uh, there was a presentation, I believe it was Scott Chu, was talking about that batting average mm-hmm. was the most difficult position to pick up off the waivers in season. So is it that versus the priority that people don't really put on bat? Like, is it because people don't prioritize batting average and you can take advantage or it's so hard to make up in season? It's 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 the most scarce. Like stolen bases get talked about all the time. Is maybe pre rule change as the scarcest category. Batting average, batting average with with the ability to do other things like Bogarts can is the scarcest commodity out there. And and I, I listened to Scott Chu's presentation at First Pitch Arizona and kind of proved mm-hmm. that out during the season. It is very difficult to uh, to to replace batting average. And I also think in these later rounds, having a batting average cushion, having a batting average floor on your team opens you up to a lot of different options later in the draft. And so I just like having that flexibility uh, later in the draft to be able to take, you know, a Dalton Varsho or, you know, an Anthony Volpe or, you know, whatever um, those types of players. There's, there's, it seems like there's a lot more of those and you can do that with a good batting average. All right. Next up on the undervalued players, we're going into the pitching market. We're actually staying in the average rank of the nineties, according to fantasy pros. And we're looking at Joe Ryan. Actually, everybody's very excited about the other Minnesota pitcher in Pablo Lopez. There's another guy that we're going to talk about later that I like. We're all like with bated breath looking for data on Chris Paddock to see what it looks like. But Joe Ryan jumps out as an undervalued guy, really low walk rate, career low walk rate into the fives. K percentage went way up. The strikeouts were there because he added the split finger. This is one of those pitchers that he his return on value versus his rank ADP really doesn't quite mesh because this is the type of player you would think would be 20 or 30 spots higher. So talk to us about Joe Ryan. I think Joe Ryan, so you mentioned the splitter, that was fantastic and a nice compliment to one of the best fastballs in the game. I think Joe Ryan from a from an actual whiff percentage on the four seamer was like fourth best. He was definitely top five in baseball last year. So he ha- now has that second kind of put away pitch along with the fastball. And the skills just soared last year. I think Joe Ryan is being undervalued in the market because of the home run problem. And there's two things to a home run problem for a pitcher. There's the ground ball fly ball, which the pitcher can control. And Joe Ryan does give up a lot of fly balls, 50% fly ball rate last year. Uh, but there's also the home runs per fly ball. Uh, that that is not as sticky year to year. And Joe Ryan just got hammered down the stretch in the second half, had a 21% homer to fly ball rate. League average on that is like 12%. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's really what dro- drove Joe Ryan's 609 uh, ERA in the second half. And I just don't think that home run variance is that sticky from year to year. I think if we get Joe Ryan with the league average homer to fly ball rate, the, the strikeout and walk skills are just fantastic. And you alluded to Minnesota Welsh. They know what they're doing as an organization. And I think they can uh, they can get Joe Ryan to 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 ascend to an even higher level than he's than he's at right now. 
a real oddity is like the fastball got hit up more from a batting average standpoint, 174 against in 2022, 240. But the expect by I would point out that's like a huge gap. But the expected batting average against was actually closer year over year. But he gave up nine homers against the four seam fastball in 2022, gave up 19 this past yep. year. So, you know, having a big adjusted pitch change, especially a split finger which isn't necessarily uh, Nick Pollock talked about it on the pitching guide episode isn't viewed as like a breakaway punch away pitch it's kind of the setup pitch to everything that that fastball fastball became a little bit more vo- more vulnerable be interesting to see if maybe the sweeper kind of takes a tick up or something like that that's years so the fastball doesn't get hit up so much but the low walk rates make him pretty exciting and I'm down with this one uh coming in at number 3 this guy has a new team and this team is quite exciting he does not cost <laughs> inside the top 115 as far as ranks go, uh, according to Fantasy Pros looking across the board. And his ADP is almost 130 across all of the sites combined. New Dodgers, Teoscar Hernandez is who we're going to be talking about as an undervalued player. Hit 26 home runs last year in a not great pitching environment. Goes to a much better spot. The Bat X actually has him projected as the most homers uh, with 28, at least versus ATC. I could see him easily going over 30 in that really, really strong lineup and good hitting environment. How undervalued is Teoscar when you think about the scope of where he is, the lineup protection, and really who he was? Even in that environment last year, dude still hit 26 homers. I know. I know. It's just absolutely, you know, it, 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 it's a perfect landing spot for Teoscar because he's going to play every day in LA and he's probably hitting behind like a Freddie Freeman, Will Smith, guys who it's perfect to hit behind those guys because they don't really hit a ton of home runs. They just get on base consistently. So there's always going to be ducks on the pond for, for Teoscar. He's also going at a point in the draft, at least where I've found so far in, in kind of feeling out some of my early drafts. I feel like around this time of the draft power starts to wane a little bit Mm. in the player pool. And and Teoscar is one of, one of the last few, like Anthony Santander is another guy kind of going a little bit later that I like too. But uh, I feel like Teoscar is one of the last few guys who not only gives you that power, but doesn't really have deficiencies elsewhere. A lot of projections have Teoscar hitting right around 260. And again, the runs and RBI, those kind of hidden counting stats that are so important in fantasy are you know the floor for that in LA is I think just just massive so perfect landing spot um especially compared to uh, Seattle last year yeah I mean and it's still like a above 13 percent barrel rate it was top 10 percentile in a league hard hit percentage love all of those things he's still getting the ball in the air the batting average you expected batting average if you're somewhere between 250 and 270 for Tay Oscar you're really in a great spot and you know you mm-hmm. said something that's really important uh, I was asked this question uh, just the other day about like, hey, what's your early round prioritization if you were looking for categories? And I said, you know what might surprise people? It's power because speed usually is that answer. That's why I say that. Uh, batting average might be one of those. It's kind of a pseudo one, but like power. I want power throughout the draft because I th- I feel like we have a we have a bigger gap between uh, supreme power versus like stolen base. Obviously, like if you had. Ellie and uh, Astori Ruiz, that might change the whole game on speed, but you can catch up speed everywhere. You're mentioning, we get to the top 100 or outside the top 100. There's only so many more real power bats that can maintain some average. You said um, Anthony Santander. I would say like Teoscar and Jorge Soler are like two of my big options. There's a couple corner infielders. uh, We're actually going to talk about one in a second, but chasing power a little bit later is still something you have to pay attention to and do. And outfield gets it wanes out a little bit. Like, are you in the camp that outfield absolutely gets away from you? Or do you think that narrative is kind of getting overplayed? So I just drafted the labor mixed uh, league Tuesday night and it's a 15 team mixed league. And I did, I had one outfielder in the first 12 rounds and man, I was nervous. (laughs) I was very nervous. Uh, When outfielder, outfielder, outfielder rounds 13, 14, 15, because I could kind of see the writing on the wall uh, that it, this was starting to to fade quickly. So um, I feel like I got out just in time, but you, I think you do need to kind of keep track of where your outfielders are yeah. at because once you start to get into that, like those late teens rounds, it's uh, it starts to get pretty tough. It's a lot of just like older platoon 
bats and you you kind of don't want that. Yeah, there's some guys I like. Like I'm into Jared Kelnick this year. I'm into Jaron Duran and stuff like that. But again, if you're focusing in on yeah. power too, there's only so many. Who was the one outfielder you did get in the beginning? Uh, it was Brian Reynolds. Oh, he's a core Reynolds. piece. I love that. Yeah. 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 I, my tout, yeah. I actually started with Corbin Carroll, but that's my only outfielder so far. But draft and hold, we're like six rounds in or something like that. So shocker yeah. that yeah. I got Corbin Carroll. Uh, let's go into the fourth undervalued player. And we're serving up burgers. He is Jake Berger. Definitely heard this name a whole lot. We know the the hard hit numbers are through the roof. He's outside the top 150 ECR ranks over on Fantasy Pros. His ADP is even lower Let's talk about Jake Berger and those obscene hard hit numbers and why he is so undervalued. Uh, that uh, that's the main part. We all know Jake Berger has power. I think it's I think it's elite power. I think it's elite power. And what we saw from Jake Berger, and I I try not to go too much, especially for hitters, into like first half, second half stats uh, that much. But in Jake Berger's case, with the context of kind of honestly just getting kind of jerked around in the first half of the season with the White Sox. Uh, inconsistent playing time, playing different positions, that sort of thing. Berger finally, once he went to Miami, settled into a role and not only kept kept the thump, kept the power, but severely cut down on his strikeout rate to the point where like, I do think maybe not as high as like a Teoscar batting average, but I think Jake Berger can hit 250. I, I, I don't think this is just a power bat who's going to hurt you in batting average. Um, and so for for all those reasons, Berger is uh is a, a very much target for me and third base too just looking at uh kind of a macro level at that position you're you, a couple guys after jake Berger, you're starting to get in trouble at the hot corner so uh jake Berger is just at the time of the draft and the uh the, the power batting average foundation that he provides i think it's a great fit uh for pretty much any team yeah i want to second this um ariel cohen Beat the Shift podcast. They just had me on and we did a draft using Fantasy Pros Draft Wizard. And I had a good team, but I tanked third base. I, when I say I tanked it, I just at every level, I was like, oh, OK, I just missed him. We'll just wait for this guy. Oh, we'll wait. And then all of a sudden we were no longer waiting. I completely tanked it. Jake Berger was one of those targets and I completely oh messed it up. But I would remind everybody. Fantasy Pros, check out the Draft Wizard. You can even import your own cheat sheets. You can take my ranks, multiple people's ranks. You can really customize it however you want. And you can experiment. You can play around with it. You also can set priorities in drafts in the Draft Wizard, like third base. You could say, I want to make sure I am taking third base, what that mock looks like, and the suggestions it gives you. So go and check it out today, fantasypros.com slash draft wizard. Download the app. Start drafting. Download the app like my uh, my best friend Justin Steele, who has a draft wizard on his phone, and uh, he likes to do draft. <laughs> does he really? Guy. Yeah, he does. We 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 were just hanging out. That I know is awesome. the story. People are so sick of me, and I apologize. But um, he found out I worked at Fantasy Pros, and he was like, "Are you serious?" He's like, "I love Fantasy Pros," and I was like. Okay, let's give me some extra credit at my job. And uh, he pulled up the draft wizard. He had the draft wizard on his phone, and we we had a great time. So he might have some swag coming his way. But uh, be like moving Justin him up Steele. the ranks, moving mm -hmm. him up the ranks. Now um, I have used I have used the the mock draft tool, and it is awesome because the experimentation you get to knock out a, a mock draft very quickly and just play with different different types of builds and that sort of thing. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, to go back to third base in, in labor, I. Was in the same predicament as you, Welsh. Did not take Jake Berger. Uh, he, I was actually sniped by Mike Podhorzer. Not that I'm keeping track of how sure. that works. Um, waited all the way to get Matt Chapman, who uh, <laughs> does not have a home. I think will. I think he'll get signed. But uh, but that was that was like the yeah. 18th, 19th round. It's a, it's a bad place to be if you wait on third base that long. That mock I did, I would have killed for Matt Chapman. That's how bad I did. So just <laughs> <laughs> okay, go and check it out. I did a really bad job. All right, number five. Let's go to the next undervalue. This is one of my favorites. I've talked about him a decent amount. Nick Pavetta. Can you believe we're talking about him here? Nick Pavetta. No, actually, particular crazy order outside of kind of the love and some of the big value. Um, when we're going through these 13 names, there's a little bit of like, think of these as tiers, not like, insane numbers but and the reason i say that is nick pavetta is ranked outside the top 200 right now on consensus ecr his adp though 
is higher than the rankers. That's a really interesting fact. And I've mentioned a little bit on the last few pods. One of the reasons I really love Nick Pavetta is from July 1st on last year, he led baseball in K percentage. And he also had, and I'll say this stat one last time, he had the highest whiff uh, addition from a starting pitcher year over year. If I could even properly say that. So he had the highest whiff addition, like five or 6% to overall whiffs from any SP because it's usually filled with RP. So either way, like a big strikeout guy. They got Bodie over there. Why do you like Nick Pavetta? Um, it, it is that second half like dominance, but it's it's not just, again, cherry picking that second half. It was it was backed by a pitch mix change. It, it, we kind of joined the sweeper revolution, had that. Had that change, and yeah, like I mean, my favorite my favorite stat to look at is strikeout minus walk rate uh, mm. from first to second half last year. The second highest jump in strikeout minus walk rate behind Freddie Peralta uh, was Nick Pavetta at twenty nine percent, which is just which is just crazy. That's um, an absurd number. The 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 haters will say, oh uh, yeah, but it was mostly out of a relief role. But he Pavetta still threw over eighty innings in the second half. Finished the season in the rotation through five starts, actually, to end the season. And in those five starts had, uh, I've got it right here, a 237 ERA, 4% walk rate, and a 16% swing strike. So just just, just excellent stuff. We've, we've all been burned by Nick Pavetta at some point in our fantasy lives, yet here we are in the year 2024, still hyping this guy. But I do think the changes that we saw from him, and you mentioned like Potty and uh, some of the organization changes, I think he can reinvent himself and, and, and pitch very well over a full season in uh, 24. You haven't played fantasy baseball unless Nick Pavetta has hurt your season. You, so. you have not, no. Man. So it's all your turn this year because we're hyping him up. We're getting excited about it. We're going to stay on pitchers for a little bit. I alluded to this guy earlier. There are things to like about the Twins. And outside of Pablo Lopez, they're actually all kind of undervalued, like Bailey Ober. And probably should have let Bailey Ober out of here because he's come into a lot of conversations. But he has continued. He continuously fits the mold of the pitchers that I like. You talk about K-minus walk percentage. His strikeouts aren't insane, but the walk percentage is really low. And he keeps it over a 20 K-minus walk percentage, which you really really love Bailey Ober uh, doesn't have a big power fastball, but has a kind of absurd whiff percentage. You don't see like 25 plus whiff percentages on fastballs, a whole bunch when you go and take a look and it was 27.7 and all of his main three big pitches that are over 10% had a 27 or higher percent whiff percentage. So it's a pretty even distribution with good control. ERA is going to be there. There's good run support. Bailey Ober undervalued to what degree? Uh, to a pretty good degree. Like honestly, I, I Bailey Ober, he's a he's a fly ball pitcher, kind of like Joe Ryan. But what that does for Bailey Ober is it kind of locks in, especially with such a small walk rate, it locks in a really right. good whip. And I don't think, at least in you know, in Roto Leagues, we don't talk about whip enough. And Bailey Ober um has all the tools to be able to do that. The biggest thing for me with Bailey Ober is uh, the number 169, 169 innings nice. from Ober last year. Like he would never very nice. He he had never had a professional season with over 110 innings in a single season before. So to see Bailey Ober jump from uh you know 108 innings in 2021, 56 in 22 to to 169 last year uh, across the minors and majors like that's kind of the last box I was waiting for him to check was that durability. So I think he can, uh, I think he can stick all year, man. Yeah. And you know, the projections got, they've only got him around like 140 something. So I, I think we can press, I think we can press and, our innings this year. And I think, yeah. And I think he's locked into Minnesota's rotation. I don't see, I mean, unless there's another like bad fit with, with the with with gopheritis with the home run ball i i can't see ober being out of that rotation he's kind of gone in and out a little bit the last few years but i i think that role is pretty safe all right coming in at number seven we are going to my arizona diamondbacks i know not world series champs just to the world series hey just just the just mm. the, the, the the camera's cropped perfectly to just says world series we can yeah we can forget we'll what pretend. happened after that Man. Boy, can we. We can sure forget. But we won't forget in our drafts, Merrill Kelly, because Merrill, that ADP 
every year. I mean, maybe it's a little bit higher and maybe it gives people it's a little bit more squeamish to people because he is boring. But ECR's got him at around 148. His ADP is actually higher. So he's going higher in drafts. But that variance doesn't push him inside the top 100. But when you think about his ability to absolutely eat innings in a landscape where pitchers do not eat innings with a great defense and a great offense behind him, Merrill Kelly has been as solid as all. He's just boring. He's just a boring pitcher for a lot of people. But what I do think that does is it makes him undervalued to not only what he gives you, but what he provides your whole team context when you take some risk. I, I'm going to take Cole Reagans early on, but you know what I love? I love some of these boring pitchers that can help just give me a baseline a little bit later when I'm taking some of those risks. And you need you need a Merrill Kelly or two in your in your in your fantasy rotation. Anyone who play has played the last couple of years, if you look at the waiver wire for starting pitchers, it is it is so barren. Um, yes, you can go with some of the guys where, you know, we just talked about Ober, Cole Reagans, where like they, you know, that they, they're not quite the horse that that Merrill Kelly is. Um, but you're open if you get too much of those guys, you're opening up some risk that you need to at some point replace someone in your rotation. And that replacement value, replacement level value is is really bad uh for starting pitchers. And it just gets worse in the the deeper leagues that you play. So um I actually think too, like, yes, Merrill Kelly does get the boring label. We saw a nice uptick in in the K rate and swinging strike rate. Um, when I see both of those go up at the same time in the same season, I, I get excited. Yes, Merrill Kelly's 35 years old. So, like, is there truly another level? I don't know. But um, I think you've got a pretty good foundation with perhaps the ability to even get a few more strikeouts and maybe ascend to that 200 strikeout plateau. He had 187 last year. He almost got there. You know what I found out, too? I didn't know until this year. He went to my high school. And now now the high school. Yeah, of course. The famous people at our high school, Mark Andrews, Merrill Kelly, and of course, the Welsh. So those are your three that are out there. I, so. I, knew, the, I knew the Mark Andrews. I did not know uh, did not know Merrill. Yeah. And sadly, I'm older than all of them. So <laughs> things are not say, great. Was he, uh, was he <laughs> yes. Did you guys cross paths or is, yeah. is, is, old man, is old man Kelly younger than you? Old man Welsh was uh, out of that high school when <laughs> Merrill was uh, popping in. So that's the, that's the sadness. Let's go to number eight. This was a uh, bloomer hand picked Thyro Estrada. Gotta love stolen bases that you can get later in drafts and multiple qualifications. So talk to us about how and why Thyro Estrada is undervalued. Kind of have been in love with Thyro Estrada ever since I wrote I wrote his player box in the the baseball forecaster uh, what Baseball HQ puts out every fall and we 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 pump it out and uh, get it out in, in by Thanksgiving but uh, I wrote Estrada's box back in October and it's right here I just you, there it is there it is little, there little it plug is. there you go my boys I, I gotta take my I gotta take my gnome down but beneath my gnome is Senor Acuna. Yeah, sorry, completely completely broke the podcast, but I wanted to give you guys a plug. You guys sent me one, so put it out there. Excellent, excellent. Um, so yes, I I had Mr. Estrada's box in that book, and I'm just I I think the batting average hit 271 last year. I think he can totally repeat that. I think the stolen bases and and talking with Bubba, who's who's very much plugged into to San Francisco. Bubba's confident that Estrada's going to get that green light. Had a uh, you know almost an eighty percent success rate on the bases last year, and and that helps. So um, I think there's thirty stolen base potential with Estrada, and I'm more bullish on the power most of all than I think everyone else. I think a lot of the projections have Estrada like in the low teens for home runs. I think he can get into the high teens, maybe best case, pop twenty home runs. And if that's the case, I'm not. I'm not calling for that. I think it's probably more fifteen, sixteen. But uh, I think this is a five category guy, eligible at two positions. Uh, that's going to play every day in San Francisco. The big thing too with Estrada, like we kind of had a little bit of a fade in the second half, but he broke his hand in June or in July, and I I think that. Uh, I think that affected things for Estrada in, in the second half. So I'm much more uh, willing to believe the early breakout path that we saw from Estrada in the first half last year. ADP 152 for Estrada. You don't usually see guys get higher projections, stolen bases when they played over 100 games. 
Now, it's simple because they're projecting more games, so his stolen base numbers are higher. But even still, you don't see that sometimes. You'll see a guy that plays 100 games, their projections will then put him at 140, and then the stolen bases are about the same. These are actually higher. If he were to go 2020, you are easily breaking inside the top 100, and this would be one of the bigger, bigger, most un undervalued players with all the other position eligibility. So that is a very fun one. All right, coming in at number nine, I'm I'm excited to hear your take on this one. Cedric Mullins, <laughs> stolen bases again. Cedric Mullins was underwhelming, hitting 233 last year. 15 homers was a three-year low. The 19 stolen bases were a three, pretty much three-year lows across the board with strikeouts coming up. But projections. They throw it all out the window because you do have a three-year um, a three-year window that it's working off of. So they really see last year as more of the outlier. His cost is cheap. And is it that outlier season that makes him such a good value right now? That's what, I, that's what I'm banking on. Um, I think Cedric Mullins. So we do have that two-year track record of, of over 1,300 plate appearances from 2021 and 2022 where Cedric Mullins was just an absolute monster for fantasy. This time last year, Mullins, I believe, was like a third-round pick. Um, I think, yes, I, I, one of my, one of my kind of things is we, we, and I'm guilty of it all the time, focus on just last season so much. We tend to forget what this track record was for a player who is still not even 30. This is Cedric Mullins' age 29 season. So I think he's young enough to turn things around. I wonder, there was a, uh, similar to like the broken hand with Estrada that I just mentioned, love to go in and look at injuries and kind of see the before and after. Uh, Cedric Mullins had a pretty bad groin strain in the middle of the season. And again, those second half numbers just absolutely tank. So this is a guy who, who quite honestly, in five of the last six half seasons, if that makes sense, has been really good. It's just his last half season was was awful and may, and there is some platoon risk I'll, I'll give you that like he didn't didn't play against lefties down the stretch last year for for baltimore but i think he'll stay even if he hits lower in the order against southpaws i think cedric mullins is young enough to turn this around and get back to the the player he was maybe not in 2021 when he went 30 30 i'm not going to sit here and say that but a lot closer to the 2022 version that hit uh, 16 homers 34 steals and hit 258. Pretty electric lineup that could potentially be as well. And that can be yes, a veteran hitting near the tippy top of it. Free. Uh, the, Cedric Mullins is also one of those players. Why? When I look and I'm like, hey, I can get stolen bases a little bit later. Thyro Estrada, Cedric Mullins, 130s ADP for and rank for Mullins, 150s for Estrada. You can find those stolen bases a little bit later. You don't find all of those uh, those big power numbers. All right, we're coming into the last couple. We've actually got two, and then we're going to do a final undervalued battle uh, between these guys. But I want to remind you guys to make sure that you guys have subscribed to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash fantasy pros, because we've got Fantasy Fest coming up. They didn't even ask me or tell me to do a promotion for this, but this is going to be coming up here very, very soon. We are going to have an amazing, amazing set of stuff going on. So make sure you are locked in to the podcast feed. You can follow it wherever you listen to podcasts, where I think we usually have kind of like a best of version of it. And we are going to have hours and hours of awesome con uh, content coming up here in mid-March for Fantasy Fest. I have the date. I'm not really sure if I should say it because we're still finalizing it, but just put it on your radar and make sure you're following the YouTube channel, fantasypros.com slash YouTube, because if you do and we get hordes of them, Joe and I will be forced to wear wigs and mustaches for the opening day of leading off. That's what we've, that's what we've promised. Yeah. Yes. Good, good old mustache. Yes. I was thinking maybe like like a long one. Like I'll do like a handlebar. How about like that? Like that? Like a good handlebar one. I like that. I, I, I you can all you can always do the uh, the Valentine disguise as well. You can What's do that? The glasses with the mustache. Remember when he got thrown out? Um, oh yeah, 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 and yeah. Put, yeah. In the, put in the disguise in the dugout. This was. I didn't even think about doing like ago. we could just wear the glasses. That would be good. So, well, make sure you guys do that. So we'll have some fun with it. All right, here are it's the last ideas. couple ones here. We the last one's going to be a battle of verses. But let's stop over to actually the camp that I was just over at the Brewers with Willie Adamas. Now Willie Adamas was one of those kind of premier power shortstops one of the guys that everybody wanted to target he was why you could skip out on shortstop early on in draft if i could get myself a willie adamas well the batting average just started to sink 217 after a 238 year except here is the oddity he is projected for a higher batting average of this year on every single projection system than he has hit over the last two 
seasons. So XBA is higher. Expected slug is higher. Every expected number is higher for Willie Adamas. So talk to me, Mr. Ryan Bloomfield, about Willie Adamas. And can he be a massively undervalued draft target this year? Yeah, I mean, taking the longer view with Adamas, he was a consistent 250, 260 hitter with Tampa early, earlier in his career. And so I, I actually buy the at, – at HQ in the forecaster, we have Adamas projected for 245, which is higher than 238 and 217 his last two seasons as well. Uh, the, the BABIP was insanely low last season. I, I, this is not a 217 hitter. Adamas also had a concussion in May, I believe, and I – it seemed like that linger. June was by far Willie Adamas's first month. Started to turn things around after that. Hit 230. So it kind of started to come back up in the second half. The biggest thing for me, it's just the power. If you need a power hitting shortstop at this point in the draft, um, I think Adamas is is fine. He's going to play every day in a you know decent lineup. Um, so so I, I I mean I like Estrada more, but. Where where Adamus is going, it makes sense. And again, different different types of players. If you need batting average or speed, actually, also maybe two compliments with Estrada's ability for multi position oh. eligibility. You can throw Adamus in a middle infield. He is ranking one seventy one. I also want to point out in all those projections, he is just at the thirty home run marker. It's somewhere between twenty six and twenty eight home runs. You get one little bit of a pop and a bus back. You might have 30 plus home runs with that 250 batting average for Adamas. And he might be a trade candidate to go to an amazingly incredible destination that makes his fantasy output even more exciting. Let's not say that that's not a possibility. As I saw Sal Freelich actually working at shortstop in the outfield here the other day. So I would not uh, throw that under the bus quite yet for him. All right. Uh, this is the last one before our battle. And we're going to talk about Jamer Candelario, who goes to the Reds. This is going to be pseudo number 11 because 12 and 13 are going to be a battle. Hit 22 home runs last year with a two. 51 batting average now goes to the world's greatest ballpark factory you could possibly have and is going to play all day yet his value really has not let me look at it here 197 is his average his expert consensus rank with an adp on all the major sites take away our ranks outside the top 200 so is candelario one of the better corner infield targets you could have and we talked about missing out on third base that might work out for you so talk to me about jamer candelario Exactly. One of, the, one of those few kind of semi-shining stars at, at third base in an otherwise uh, vast array of blackness. So uh, Candelario is, is I, I, I like him. The, the, the park factor is fantastic. The question is the playing time that we know there are approximately 35 infielders in, in, in Cincinnati vying for playing time. But I, I think it's pretty safe. I think it's pretty safe. Uh, for Candelario, so they I, said I, it I was. Like they to, they told us. They, exactly. they said like you, he's playing every day. Like you, you can't and like I believe that more than oh we don't know he's going to play every day because maybe you're just trying to incite some competition. It is I I, I trust a team when they I trust a team a little bit more. I never fully trust the yeah. team, but I, I trust them a little bit more when they say they come out and say he's going to play every day. I think you do need to take that at face value. So for all those reasons, uh, Candelario like he doesn't have the highest ceiling in the world. But if you can get a third baseman that hits 250, 20, 25 home runs in that park um, in a really good lineup, again, um, I, th I think it works very well. Qualifying at first and third is going to yep. be a big key, too, for where you can move them around for any deficiencies. Maybe you take on a little bit of risk at third or first base, a little bit of injury risk out there. Having that guy with a ballpark factor that can go 25 plus in all of this other thing aside, think of how exciting and kind of amazing that lineup could be if all the things work out with Spencer Steer and Ellie De La Cruz. And if everybody's going, that could be like this year's Diamondbacks as far as uh, how they're running and how you know aggressive they are offensively. And he could be at the forefront of it. He really could be kind of like the Lourdes Gurriel breakout. Lourdes kind of broke back out uh, post, 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 post hype sleeper type of guy from last year. Jamer could be one of those as well. All right, so this last one, this is a pitcher duel for undervaluedness, and they're very different because I think perception is different. One was kind of a reliever going into starter, and one we really don't know anything about. So how can they be undervalued? We are pitting Shota Amanaga versus Christopher Sanchez up. What a weird collection of names. I know you're saying that, but 
Christopher Sanchez is a very popular sleeper in a lot of lands. So much so, Mr. Ryan Bloomfield gave me him as one of the names he wanted to talk about. I threw on show to Monica because everybody can't stop talking about him. Justin Steele couldn't talk, stop talking. Nick Pollock had him in the 35s. Monica might be a monster, but people don't know what they're in for. So here's the question. What you know versus what you don't know. And what we do know is both of these guys are outside the top 200. So who is more undervalued? Christopher Sanchez or Shota Amonica? Shota. Yes, I, I I I pleaded incessantly that we add uh, Christopher Sanchez on the on on the rundown here. He is my he is my pitcher uh, that I'm trying to get in every single draft outside the top 200. Um, I, I will admit that the track record, the minor league numbers with Christopher Sanchez were not that great. The schedule down the stretch was was pretty soft. But this changeup that he refined and threw more as throughout the season went on, uh, Christopher Sanchez, that, it was one of the best pitches in baseball in terms of ground balls and whiffs. And that's that's what you want a changeup to do. You want to get that on the ground and you want it to miss bats. The walk rate was fantastic. I, I, I use uh, ball percentage to kind of validate a walk rate and Christopher Sanchez threw strikes consistently. Um, anytime you have someone with like a four to five percent walk rate with the ground ball rate that's in the upper 50s, it's just it, it just does so much for you in terms of run prevention. Um, and yes, like the strikeout upside may not quite be there, but if, if that changeup continues to kind of do what, what we saw in the second half, I think Christopher Sanchez uh, is is an absolute breakout this year. Like I said, I'm having him on every single one of his one of my teams. No, no shade to Imanaga, Iman, but uh, I'm going Sanchez, man. Okay, so clearly over. So Chris Sanchez wins that battle, but Shoto Imanaga is still a potentially big undervalue because – he has not he jumped in value. He is two. Uh, let me look. I just had it up here. He was two oh eight on the consensus rank, and or no, I'm sorry, that was his ADP was two oh eight. He was around two twenty. Chris Sanchez has an ECR of two sixty, but is two eighty three. So that is a difference. There's almost eighty spot difference in ADP versus these two guys. It's just will Sanchez's innings and strikeouts go to a level if Amonaga works out? Where I think. In some people's minds, Monica might be way closer than uh, Yoshinobu Yamamoto than anybody actually really expects and could be one of the front runners in that Cubs rotation. But Christopher Sanchez is a free square. That's kind of the big one, right? Yeah. And then the thing I'll add about Imanaga too, yeah, go go compare Yamamoto and Imanaga, Imanaga's numbers last year and then compare their ADP this year. I, I think I think you'll be surprised. So I think that's yeah. I think that's the 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 big thing with Imanaga. Um, 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 yeah. A Monica, uh, Monica, so, yeah. and you got a great splitter to go with the you know the number one W uh, stuff plus in the WBC. You can say all there of that. Go. I can't. You got it. If you can say it, you're hired. I cannot. Those are the thirteen undervalued players that you guys need to target, according to myself and Ryan Bloomfield. You can find Bloomer, my boy Bloomer, over at Baseball HQ. Uh, I'd also follow him on Twitter at RyanBHQ. You can check out all the great Bloom boards. And of course, uh, you've got Bubba in the Bloom. Anything else that everyone needs to know about? That's pretty much it, man. Check out, yeah, check out our podcast after, of course, listening to Fantasy Pros every day. But uh, you check us out Monday or uh, Wednesday and Friday, new episodes. Perfect. And like I said, follow him on Twitter, uh, Ryan BHQ. You'll get all the updates and everything that's going on. Bloomer, thank you so much for taking the time. He's one of the best in the industry. So make sure that you are supporting and following because it's going to make you a better fantasy player, just like the tools over here at Fantasy Pros are going to do as well. Check out the draft kit. I got a bunch of articles. Mike Mayer, by the way, who finished top five in baseball accuracy ranks this year. He's got all his stuff in there. Check out all the great stuff. We got articles going. My uh, We got some premium content as well. My uh, draft day targets article is officially out. If you want to see the player at every position that I must have, you can go and check that out. So go over to fantasypros.com, peruse all the great stuff, sign up for premium, get in the Discord, hang out with us, and have so much fun. Thank you guys all for hanging out with me you, and Bloomer. You can find me on Twitter at IsItTheWelsh, and we will talk to you next time right here on Fantasy Pros. Bye, friends.